So the highlight of your career definitely was winning Wimbledon in 1987. Yeah. How much of that final do you still remember? The entire not thing? Not much. Really? No, no, not much at all, really. Uh, I see the, 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 the end where I'm climbing through the stands. I get to see that a lot because <laughs> people do that on replay. Yeah. Um, that's, that's very emotional for me. Mm -hmm. um, for obvious reasons, but mm -hmm. my, my, also my father has passed away, so yep. he, and he's one of the main people in the in the, the players mm -hmm. box that I, that I go climb to. Um, but yeah, it was a long it was a long time ago. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I haven't actually never watched the match yep. replay, mm -hmm. um, but I think one day I will. Okay. I I, I did a I, I had a documentary made about my life uh, when I was around that time, uh -huh. and I replayed it to my for my children. Yep. I thought they might be interested to see what if they and one of my boys was interested, the others just walked off. They weren't interested. I, I thought I thought maybe they'd like to see my dad playing, you know, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't interested at all. At all. It was really maybe funny. Maybe they were too, so. too young or maybe they weren't interested in tennis. No, they were twenty seven at the time. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my son is twenty seven now though. Okay. Well um Actually, speaking about that final, you actually went up to the stands and hugged your friends and your family and in, inadvertently started a trend of yeah. people sort of like, you know, running to their family and friends yeah, that's uh, right. when they win big tournaments. Was it like premeditated on your part or was it just, just like a spur of the moment kind of thing? Um, it, it was, I did think about it, it was yeah. pre, premeditated. Okay. Um, if I, I don't know if I meditated on it, but <laughs> I, I thought about it yeah. um, and but I didn't really think much about it. I okay. just thought, oh, that'd be cool. One day, if, you know, when I went, I thought I was going to win Wimbledon. Yeah. You never know for sure, mm -hmm. but I thought, I can, you know, if I win, I'm going to climb through the stands. That would be really cool. And yeah. that's about all I thought about. Yeah, it. yeah. Until the night before the final, and it just came to my head, go, oh, tomorrow when I, yeah, I'll win, when I win tomorrow, I'll, I'll climb through the stands. Yeah, okay. And that was about it. Okay. Until I, when I was about to do it, and I thought, oh, I can't. I can't go climbing through the stands now. The ceremony has started and the royal family is there. And I thought, oh, I, I can't really do that. But uh, and then I decided, okay, I'm just going to go for it. Yep. Um, so it looked like I'd made the decision at the last minute, mm -hmm. but I sort of thought about, I, I want, really wanted to thank, the most important thing was I wanted to thank my my coach and my father, my, fa my father, my sister was there, but my family. Mm -hmm. So I had a, a family support. Um, you know, I was a I was a young father. Yeah. Um, at that stage, I'd already my son was one year old, mm -hmm. um, and you know, that was and was, I had some a major back injury before that. Um, so in a very short time, I had a lot happen to me in my career and uh, in my life. Mm -hmm. So it was really a way of thanking thanking them because mm -hmm. it was a team effort and yep. and um, my my team is very normal now to mm -hmm. have a team of trainer and you know yep. coach and physio mm -hmm. whatever. But then, it wasn't normal at all, mm -hmm. and so I was really the. Ivan Lendl had a couple of people, um, but by, by and large, there was really had one coach maybe, um, and so that was sort of the first of the entourage, shall we yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was because I wanted to be professional. I mm -hmm. wanted to have a good I'm a trainer. I wanted to be fitter. I wanted. I had a sports psychologist with me as well, so I had a team to make me as good as I could be, and I wanted to thank them for that. And you started a trend, just like that. Well, yeah. You it should was, trademark it. Yeah, I know. People <laughs> said that. I think it was, it was. I think it's very natural. Yeah. But I was just the first one to do it. Mm -hmm. So, first one really to break, break through the ice and and do it. And um, you know, now we see it all the time in yeah. different sports, Olympics or, or mm -hmm. whatever. And it's to me, it's completely yeah. normal. But I just happen to be the first one to do it. To to be brave enough or stupid enough, I don't know, <laughs> to do it. Okay, so in the 80s, you were like a celebrity and living in London, actually you were hounded by paparazzis, you and your family. Yeah, How did the fame and the scrutiny change change you as a person or did it? Um, yeah, I think we always change. Mm -hmm. We're constant, everybody's constantly changing. Um, I think it'd be sad if we weren't, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so yeah, absolutely these things change me. I don't think they change my values as a person. Um, I think they remain very family orientated and, and uh, you know kind, but you know, there's extra stress, extra pressure. So there were moments where uh, you know I did I got overstressed, um, lots of moments where I got yeah. overstressed, and mm -hmm. and you know that's 
I, you know, I remember, I sort of remember the time when I was about 19, 18, 19, when tennis stopped becoming fun and it started becoming a business. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that was a big change, a big shock to me as well. And, mm -hmm. and again, that was just another phase of mm -hmm. all of a sudden I became, I, I wasn't any different player two weeks before I won Wimbledon okay. than after I won Wimbledon. Okay. It's just that I won Wimbledon, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that just goes to show how many good players are out there who can who can perform well on their day. And, and I had, you know, two good weeks. Um, I had two good years, I suppose, and did a lot in those two good years. And, and but I wasn't. I was really pretty much the same person. I was just becoming a better tennis player. Okay, so. Um you made the decision to retire in the 90s after several bad injuries. How difficult was that decision for you? And thinking really, about the next phase of your life. Yeah, I didn't really want to retire. Okay. Um, I really didn't. I had very little support from, or no support from the ATP, the governing bodies, uh, a, little bit, a little bit from Tennis Australia. But even then they didn't. They gave me a couple of wild cards in the Australian Open at, towards the end of my career when yep. I was make, trying to make comebacks. Mm -hmm. You know, I had, you know, I broke my Achilles not only a, a year or two years after uh, winning Wimbledon, mm -hmm. and then since then I had I had two knees, major knee surgeries, mm -hmm. uh, back surgery mm -hmm. as well, and then another knee, another knee surgery. So I'd, I just couldn't get going. I okay. couldn't couldn't go, and my body was telling me that was enough. Okay. Um, so, but I was. I made this decision a, a, a couple of years before that, when I was about 30, 29, to change my game, to get mm -hmm. create more power in my game. And I hired a biomech biomechanist, which is basically a body movement specialist, okay. who was a specialist in tennis mm -hmm. and sport. And we changed my game, and I had created a lot more power in okay. my game. It was fantastic, it was a great learning experience. And I wanted to try this new powerful game out on the circuit but mm -hmm. I just couldn't get into the tournaments I couldn't get a run I couldn't get more than one tournament or once a month or whatever okay. and you have to do this for yeah. a, a year mm -hmm. two years to really get your game going and, and so I played a little bit of doubles and I got occasional wild card into qualifying and the next next phase was really to go back to the lower level tournaments and work my way up and play lots and lots of matches mm -hmm. and you know these are places that you know, only have maybe three-star hotels. Uh, I wouldn't be seeing my family, and then I made the decision that um, you know that that was enough. Really, mm -hmm. uh, just I just couldn't get have any couldn't get any luck. Mm -hmm. you know? Even if mm -hmm. I was fit, I got sick. Yeah. You know, it was just one of those things. And okay. My body and my brain was just overstressed, and okay. I'd uh, I'd had enough. Okay. You think you would have reached um, your true potential? if it weren't for all these setbacks? Do you think you've given it in your all in your tennis career? I think I reached my potential um, at, the, at the time. You okay. know, I think there was, it was, it's a lot, uh, you know, things have changed in, in, in tennis in my mm -hmm. life. Um, I only had really two, two or three good years where I wasn't injured. Yep. And I did a lot in those mm -hmm. two or three good years. Uh, but I never really got a chance to I suppose be as good as I could be because of the injuries. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's what a sportsman is. That's the yep. way it is. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes some players don't get injured. Some players get injured, and, and so therefore, um, you don't re reach your potential. Um, but you do. I did as well as I possibly could yep. under the circumstances. Okay. More ahead on Stadium Unplugged. Then again, I don't want to slow down. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying it as I go.